What happened to Command & Conquer Generals 2? Why was this game never made? Today, I'm going to try my best to answer these questions and explain where Command & Conquer is today. So in order to talk about Generals 2, I first need to talk a bit about the original Command & Conquer Generals. This game was released in 2003 and is a favorite among fans of Command & Conquer, like myself. This game was quite a bit different than the Command & Conquer titles that came before it, and fans had wanted a sequel to Generals for years. Command & Conquer as a series continued to pump out games after Generals for a while, until 2010's Tiberium Twilight, which was... Well, I haven't played it, but I heard it was pretty awful. It strayed away from a lot of the things that came before it, and was just generally not a very good Command & Conquer game, supposedly. Because of how bad Tiberium Twilight was received, much of the Command & Conquer team within EA Los Angeles was laid off in 2010, causing the future of the series to be cast in doubt. In October 2010, an EA exec had told the media that the Command & Conquer series would live on as a brand from Dead Space developers Visceral Games, with the title from the series to be released by that developer being far off, apparently. And whether or not he was referring to Generals 2 is, is unknown. I mean, what game he was really talking about, we don't know. That seems like that never came to fruition. But as a result, there was a lot of speculation and nobody really knew what was next for the series, if anything at all. Then, in early 2011, it was announced that Victory Games was the new studio that would be responsible for future Command & Conquer games which had fans wondering exactly what was next for the series. We would get this answer in late 2011, when at the Spike Video Game Awards, EA revealed that Victory Games was now known as Bioware Victory, and the studio's first project was Command & Conquer Generals 2. This game was supposed to be set 10 years after the first Generals game, and was supposed to be a return to the roots of Command & Conquer after the disaster that was 2010's Tiberium Twilight. The game was going to run on the Frostbite engine, and from what little we knew about the game, it seemed like it was going to be great. It seemed like EA, perhaps at one point, had forgotten how to make a Command & Conquer game, and it seemed like they kind of remembered, and the game it looked like we were going to get looked great. It seemed like EA finally knew what they needed to do to get the series back on track. But then... Uh, about half a year later, in August 2012, it was announced that Command & Conquer Generals 2 was now just being referred to as Command & Conquer, and instead of being a traditional retail inbox Command & Conquer game, it was going to be an online multiplayer free-to-play game. And you know what free-to-play means, right? Microtransactions. Lots of them, especially when we're talking about EA. And supposedly, this game was going to be a quote-unquote platform that would span the Command & Conquer series history, with Generals merely being the first of the franchise's various worlds offered to fans. Speaking of the fans, the, the response from the fans was not positive, and for good reason. This is EA we're talking about here. Command & Conquer was a traditional, old-school RTS series that had been around for a long time, and that's largely the type of game that fans wanted. So when EA goes and announces, oh hey guys, you know, after all this crap you dealt with, we're finally giving you what you want, here's Generals 2, of course everyone goes nuts. But once again, this is EA we're talking about here, so we know it's going to end horribly, like always. And it does. EA had the perfect opportunity. I know a lot of Command & Conquer fans that would have bought Generals 2, myself included. But what, what did EA do instead, instead of just going with the safe bet and making Generals 2? EA's like, oh, uh, hey guys, y you know that super cool Generals sequel we were making? Yeah, that game everyone thought looked really good. The one that went back to the roots of the franchise. Yeah, um, about that, guys. Yeah, um, just, just kidding. It's actually a free-to-play game filled with microtransactions. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, like, like, what the hell, EA? Who thought that was a good idea? Anyway, back to the story. So, fans were pissed, and of course, EA tried to do damage control by saying that going to free-to-play meant they could be more flexible and add things to the game over time and give the fans what they want and blah, blah, blah. Of course, no one actually believed it, like I said, this is EA we're talking about, but despite all the negative reactions, 
EA dug their heels in and just kept going with the game. Over the course of the next year, they did alpha testing, they showed trailers, lots of screenshots, they had dev diaries for it, they really gave it the whole nine yards to try to convince people that they actually cared and that this was not going to be a complete and total disaster of a game. But the thing is, the, the fan base was not stupid, and EA was not going to be able to convince people that this damn free-to-play game was actually the traditional Command & Conquer game they wanted. Because it wasn't. So, finally, in October 2013, after over a year of trying to get people to like it, EA finally gave in and realized this wasn't the game the fans wanted. So what did they do? Did they revert it back to Generals 2? Did they say, okay guys, you know what, scratch this thing, we're actually going to give you the game that you want? No. No, of course they didn't. I mean, did you think EA was going to do that? No. Instead, they torched the whole project and fired everyone at Victory Games before their first game even came out. Good job, EA. So, EA made the following statement. Generals, thank you for your participation over the last few months in the Command & Conquer closed alpha test. It's been much appreciated, and you've been instrumental in helping define what a new Command & Conquer experience should and shouldn't be. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Part of being in a creative team is the understanding that not all of your choices are going to work out. In this case, we shifted the game away from campaign mode and built an economy-based, <coughs> that means filled with microtransactions, <coughs> multiplayer experience. Your feedback from the alpha trial is clear. We are not making the game you want to play. That is why, after much difficult deliberation, we have decided to cease production of this version of the game. Although we deeply respect the great work done by our talented team, ultimately it's about getting you the game you expect and deserve. Over the next 10 days we'll be refunding blah 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 whatever, contact help. We believe that Command & Conquer is a powerful franchise with huge potential and a great history, and we are determined to get the best game made as soon as possible. Yeah, okay. To that end, we have already begun looking at a number of alternatives to get the game back on track. We look forward to sharing more news about the franchise as it develops. Thank you again for your participation and support. So yeah, that, that was pretty much it. EA did later announce in November 2013 that they were actually not cancelling the game and a new studio was working on it. But EA's attitude during this time period seems to be very wishy-washy about it. They, they didn't say anything for months and months, and then later in 2014, they announced that they were actually looking for a developer to continue the development of this game. So, I mean, obviously, whatever developer they were talking about before, they had some sort of problem or whatever. And then, that's it. Literally nothing was said about this Command & Conquer game after that. So, was it abandoned? Yeah, probably, but EA tried to make it sound like this game was still a possibility. But, I mean, look, after all this time, that seems very unlikely. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really want EA to make this Command & Conquer game, because this wasn't Generals 2. Generals 2 didn't die when Victory Games was disbanded. Generals 2 died back when EA decided to make a free-to-play game. That's what killed Generals 2. It's sad, because the game looks so good, and hell, even the free-to-play version looked good graphically, despite probably being a disaster waiting to happen. But that was it. Command & Conquer was done. It was dormant. And for many years, it seemed like this was pretty much the end for Command & Conquer. I mean, we got total radio silence for a long, long time after this. But then, EA announced Command & Conquer Remastered. And it includes the original, and Red Alert, and all the expansions updated graphically for only 20 bucks. I mean, it's not a new game, so it's not exactly the most interesting news in my opinion, but it is good news, and it means that maybe EA hasn't completely abandoned Command & Conquer after all. And furthermore, because of the lack of microtransactions, this might be a stretch, but maybe this means EA would be open to the idea of making a real Command & Conquer game, and not just another garbage mobile game or a free-to-play game. I mean, who knows, if this sells well, maybe we'll actually see another Command & Conquer game for real. Maybe we will see a Generals too. Now, I mean, I'm probably getting ahead of myself there, that's really just wishful thinking, 
But the important thing to remember is that even though Generals 2 is dead, Command & Conquer isn't. That's all I got today, folks. If you enjoy my content, then of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm out.